Hi, and welcome to lesson three in our reactions unit. Here we're gonna talk about double replacement reactions, which are not redox reactions. Hey, look everybody, it's Chemistry Cat. Hi, Chemistry Cat. Uh, Chemistry Cat would like you to know that if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the precipitate. And that's hilarious, kind of. But of course, it might not make any sense to you yet. Bear with us for the course of this video and that will make perfect sense. Let's go in and take a look. Like I said, double replacement reactions are not redox reactions. So they're gonna need a different kind of driving force that's not gonna be due to the exchange of electrons. In a double replacement reaction, two kinds of soluble compounds are going to combine to make an insoluble compound, which is called the precipitate. If we do not get a precipitate formed, we will not have a reaction occurring. This is not a redox reaction. There's gonna be no change in oxidation states over the course of this reaction. The general formula for a double replacement reaction is as follows. Two dissolved substances, which I've written here as A, B, and C, D in aqueous solution, are going to combine to produce a precipitate, which I've written here as A, D as a solid, and two other ions which will remain in solution, which are called spectator ions in this case. Remember that spectator ions in a redox reaction had no change in their oxidation state. That's different than spectator ions in a double replacement reaction where no change in oxidation state is ever seen. The spectator ions in a double replacement reaction just remain dissolved in the solution. We should also note that the precipitate can also be a gas or a liquid, something like water, which of course is somewhat hard to see when these things are occurring in a water-based solution. And keep in mind that the precipitate could be CB if CB were insoluble, in which case AD would be the spectator ions. Here's an example of a double replacement reaction. In this reaction, we're combining lead two plus ions with iodide ions to produce the insoluble precipitate lead two iodide or PBI2. This is a famous reaction in chemistry because when you combine lead two plus ions and iodide ions to make lead two iodide, you get these small golden yellow crystals produced, which almost look like a golden rain happening in the beaker. It's important to understand that what we've done here is we've just focused on the ions that participate in the reaction. So we've left the spectator ions out of the overall equation. This is what's called the net ionic equation, and it's a totally valid way to write a double replacement reaction if you don't wanna show the ions that are not participating in the reaction. We just omit them and only write the ions that are going to form the precipitate. So it's really important for the purpose of double replacement reactions to determine whether or not a particular compound is going to be soluble or insoluble. We have a reference table for that. It's reference table F, which are the solubility guidelines for aqueous solutions, solutions where water is the solvent. The left side of the column are ions that form soluble compounds, things that will dissolve in water, and the right side have ions that will form insoluble compounds, things that will not dissolve. Of course, there are some exceptions on both sides. So exceptions on the left side would make insoluble things, and exceptions on the right side will make soluble things. I hope that makes sense. You use this in order to identify precipitates. We need to have a precipitate produced in order to have a successful double replacement reaction. So if we do not have an insoluble compound produced, we will not get a reaction to happen. My tip to you is to always use the anion of the compound when looking at the chart. There are some cations listed, group one ions for instance, or ammonium, but for the most part, this chart is listed by anion. So if you can find the negatively charged ion in the compound on this chart and use that, that's going to help you out to determine whether or not the substance is soluble or not. Let's take a moment and practice using reference table F. So this is not in your packet. I've got five different ionic substances here. I'd like you to figure out if these are soluble or insoluble in water, in aqueous solutions. Pause the video, try it on your own, and then when you're ready, we'll go through it together. So Li2CO3 is soluble. Carbonates are generally insoluble, but there are some exceptions. One of those exceptions is group one ions, of which lithium happens to be one, so it is a soluble compound. Lead to nitrate is also soluble. Nitrates are always soluble. There are no exceptions listed on the chart. So that nitrate is going to make the compound soluble, whatever it's bound to. Barium sulfate is insoluble. Sulfates are generally soluble, but there are some exceptions, and the barium two plus ion as the cation in that compound is one of those exceptions, which makes it an insoluble compound. Lead to chromate is insoluble. Chromates are generally insoluble and lead to is not an exception. And magnesium hydroxide is insoluble for the same reason. Hydroxides are generally insoluble and magnesium is not an exception. Do these make sense? If they don't, take a moment and write down any questions that you have before we move on. Now that we have a handle on solubility and insolubility, we can figure out how to complete double replacement reactions. The first thing you want to do is to figure out the element combinations in the products. Once we know that, we need to figure out the products formulas and then we can balance the reaction. 
Once that's done, we can figure out what the precipitate is and what the spectator ions are, and that's the end of the process. Let's go and try an example. This is on page 12 in our unit 8 packet. Determine the products of the following double replacement reaction. So we've got potassium chromate and barium nitrate in this reaction. Pause the video and try it on your own, and then when you're ready, we'll go through it together. So I'm just going to work through the steps that we just talked about. In the first step, I need to figure out the element combinations in the products. We know that my ions are K plus and CrO4 2 minus and Ba2 plus and NO3 minus. So when I put them together, I'm going to wind up with K plus being combined with NO3 minus and Ba2 plus being combined with CrO4 2 minus. Once I know that, I can figure out the formulas of the compounds. K plus and NO3 minus are going to combine in a one to one ratio, and Ba2 plus and CrO4 2 minus are also going to combine in a one to one ratio, which means that the formulas of my products are KNO3 and BaCrO4. Once I know that, I can just balance the equation. I've got two potassiums in my reactants. I've got one in my product, so I'm going to need to put a two in front of it. That gives me the two potassiums. It also gives me the two nitrates that I need. I do not need to put any number in front of barium chromate because all I need is one of each. That done, I can figure out the precipitate and the spectator ions. Going to reference table F, I see that nitrate is always soluble, as, as are group 1 ions. So potassium nitrate is my spectator ion, and barium chromate is my precipitate. And that's it. I'm done. Does this make sense? If it doesn't, write down any questions that you have before we wrap up. Thanks so much for watching our discussion of double replacement reactions. Make sure you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can determine if a double replacement reaction is going to occur when two aqueous substances are combined. Will a precipitate form? If it won't form, we will not get a double replacement reaction. Also make sure that you can represent double replacement reactions as balanced chemical equations. If you can do those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Write down any questions that you have. You can always leave them for me in the comments below the video, or you can always get in touch with me. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.